was going to ask you though, how is managing parents on both sides? Mm. Their expectations of what it's going to be. Do you know what? Yeah, I think none of them are going crazy. Yet. You know, like you get this, <laughs> yeah, maybe it's yet. You know, when you get this thing of like, parents want like 50 people each, like per parent and yeah. that. <laughs> they've not come on that they've not come on that vibe but there's definitely like oh you gotta have like, this auntie this uncle you have it a little bit in it yeah, yeah so yeah. yeah I think both our parents are quite helpful though man mm. like like whatever help we need so for example if we switch to traditional uh, cloth mum and dad have said oh like we'll go over to Ghana find the materials etc which I can't necessarily do in the time frame. You ain't got time. Married. I haven't necessarily got the time. So you should know today. This is it. Bro. Literally. <laughs> Book your flight after tomorrow. recorded. <laughs> <laughs> International break, maybe. Yeah. But, but yeah, no. So they're, they're both pretty helpful in that, that aspect. But yeah, we'll see closer to the time how things ramp up, man. I'm sure they will. Mm. What about for you? I feel like there was like, oh yeah, like you do it how you want to do it kind of thing in it but mm-hmm. then you, you get like small flashes of excitement from them you know thinking like right like what is this ain't what we said before <laughs> but mm. they're just so excited that they just can't contain it yeah, yeah, yeah. but then you have to kind of roll them back in like nah like <laughs> manage this is this is what we're doing then yeah, they'll be like all right cool, cool, cool. yeah 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 that's way man yeah because they can't help the excitement in it because they're happy as well but mm. they just yeah just get a bit too excited but it's mm. nice it's nice you gotta contain it a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, for real. Like they, they get mad excited, you know. I can imagine. Like, I, this is a prime example. Yeah, I asked them. Yeah, like, like list of people in it. Their list, yeah, was like, if I had to add up mum and dad's list, it was like almost eighty people. Check. Mm-hmm. Yeah almost 80 people because they'll invite like one person but everyone forgets that people have spouses mm. so one person is two people yeah mm-hmm. then you do that like 10 times that's 20 people yeah then they f- then they're inviting like colleagues and that or like just like, their other family members as well which is also my family but like not people you'd have invited you know what I mean yeah but, <laughs> <laughs> but then that that list it really, truly was like 60 odd. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, nah, man, I have to trim from. Listen, you see just the savagery, I cut, I cut that down. But we'll know the final number soon anyway. You know what's bad? Me and Miss are having a conversation about weddings. And I said to her, if you don't speak to them on an everyday basis. Ev- do every not, day. Do not, not even every day. If you don't, if they're not in your phone book as someone that you'd phone, do not invite them. I don't care if they're your first auntie. No, I'll be, I'll be honest. That's, that's that's tough, you know. No, but I'll be so real tough. because it's, it's easier said than done. Way easier. No, because like, if you don't speak to someone on a regular basis, or they're not close with you, or they haven't been close with you in your life, yeah, why are you invite them to your wedding? That's yeah, but, that's different, though. No, but, I'm talking, but I'm talking about like family, like family members, like friends. Obviously, we're gonna be distant. With to an extent. Uh, with our family. parents, it's different. Yeah, yeah, it's. it's... Yeah, no, because our parents can't be inviting this, 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 and this person. No, no, obviously, but like. There's also that slight leeway that you have to give them in terms of like, mm. bro, there'll be, you don't know, they'll just say this was the person that helped raise you for a period of time, just for argument's mm. sake. Like, but we'd never know that. Do you know what I mean? And to them, that person is close or special to them. They just right. don't really speak to them as much. Yeah, yeah. Mm. But throughout life. <laughs> so Secretly as well, I think, do you know when you're the first marriage in your sort of household? After your parents, mm. that's another pressure of. Are you? Yeah. Ah, yeah. Uh, that's why. Yeah, right. yeah. so that's another pressure of. <laughs> Everyone's uh, there. They need everyone. You're there, getting bro. put on the phone to this uncle or aunt, saying, "Oh, tell them about the wedding. Tell them about the wedding," because they haven't had it yet. And like you said, the excitement. <laughs> but if they've been excited. through it once or twice, I think it starts dying down a little bit. Like mm. they've been to some kids' weddings. All right, cool, yeah. it's a different duo and thing. But if you're the first. <laughs> So different. You two on the same boat in that Yeah, sense. I think so, man. Mm. But bro, I see, like, your mom's going to see this as well, how happy she is speaking about, like, your process and stuff. She... Yeah, because... <laughs> what, what's she saying about it? Yeah, that's between me and your mom. <laughs> 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 me, your mom, and my mom. <laughs> that's it, man. <laughs> but she just... Like, yeah, like oh, I like, said... She, she get, she's, like, gets excited. 
and it's it's it's, it's nice to see in it. Yeah. But mm. It's also like there's a lot of planning that that goes into it, and it's just it's just crazy. Yeah, but yeah. I was a um I think yeah no come my sister came like I said she came over, um we were saying subconsciously like you I don't think you'd realize until after how much your mum will take off your plate as well. Yeah, in yeah, terms yeah. of dealing with you maybe you've witnessed or taken notice straight away but like there's so much stuff especially with our culture or well, your culture in particular yeah. that your mum will just take so much off your plate that you only realise once it may be done for instance or at the later yeah. stages yeah so no, sure. yeah they, they, got, they got a big job on their hands you said they <laughs> no no they <laughs> they, oh, they, oh, they, oh. Yeah, they, they, got, they got a big job on their hands mm. but anyway Done with the wedding talk. <laughs> yeah, <I'm joking. laughs> but obviously, congrats to you guys. Get me and all that. Um, back to football. What would you say is your best moment um, personally within your career? Because something stands out for me. But <laughs> I know what you're thinking. Oh, obviously, it's between... It's probably between Premier League debut... Promotion and the hat trick, mm. but oh, it's tough, man. That is tough. Still, obviously, in my head, it was just a hat trick. Isn't it? <laughs> you can get more. You can get other promotions. This is the thing. Mm. But the hat trick is like in the special. win as well. Like how big the yeah. scoreline was. Yeah, that the hat trick is probably my like favorite achievement. Mm. I would say, as opposed to biggest. But my favourite achievement is probably scoring a hat-trick car. You know that it's not common that people do it. Mm. Mm. What team was this against? Harrogate. Mm-hmm. Harrogate, so... Scoreline was 9-2. Yeah, it was, mm. mad. It was a, it was a mad, mad, mad game, but... Bro, I had to go back and watch the highlights, like, two, three times straight mm. after the game. Do you know what's funny, though? Like, after scoring the two... After scoring the brace in the first half... Like the confidence that I had that I'm going to score again. Mm. I said, as long as I'm on the pitch, mm. I'm getting the next goal. And literally just dropped to me in the box, like six yards up, tapping. You know, so I don't know, like for players that probably won braces, I don't know how they feel normally because mm. people that do it time and time again. Yeah. But I just feel like something's going to drop. I've got so much time to score here. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it was, it was a mad moment. And I can't lie, I feel like that kind of, was the point where we as a team probably felt like we can beat anyone where we're going to do this as well do you know what I mean you start getting feared by other clubs so that's why it was it was a, a special moment man honestly mm-hmm. yeah. I remember scrolling Twitter and I was like I was just catching up because it was a Tuesday night game yeah. and I was just like huh I was like here I am again. Huh? I was like, nah. <laughs> bro, I know? was like, raw. I just went on Mansfield too. I was like, this is a mad thing. Do you know what was crazy though? I hadn't like so first half of the season. Like I said, I weren't playing much. I hadn't started a game for ages. Like the last time I had started a game, the weather was hot. That's what. <laughs> I was. So literally, I didn't go on loan. I think I was training well that week, and they said, "Oh, you might be." playing tomorrow so be ready sort of thing mm-hmm. I've not started a league game in time so I'm thinking right like see my name on there because you find out the team in the change room innit mm-hmm. like, properly I'm thinking right I said to one of my teammates if I'm going to play next week I better score a hat <laughs> <laughs> I swear <laughs> down so, so at half time one, he remind the same guy reminded me I was like yeah boy, I need to go to score then yeah and scored so yeah man it was that made it better for me as well like just knowing that the work that I had put in ultimately paid off in the end mm. most definitely most definitely so your prep you, uh, it's mad that you said that your biggest achievement is the hat trick because you can never make a prem debut again that's the yeah. thing yeah oh I right, said favourite yeah that's trick, yeah, that's probably biggest biggest is the prem debut yeah, yeah sure but like because you can never do it again I know but you know as well like I think Maybe when I look back at the end of my career, I might have a different answer and I might say, mm-hmm. that's okay to change your, your, your mind or something. But just because it's more recent and mm, okay, like I feel it more. Whereas mm-hmm. that was just, we're talking, what, 2015 or something like that? Yeah, it would have been. Yeah. We're talking, it's a long time ago. Nine years now. Yeah, nine yeah. years. So, so that's probably what it is. It's more recent, so it feels a bit more fun. 
This is it. And I feel like just like you said, you lot went from like on a good, you lot were on a good momentum then. Mm -hmm. And it carried on up until you got promoted mm -hmm. effectively. Yeah. Because there was never a point like I felt you lot will go into a game where you're not favourites, if yeah. that made sense. Like yeah. even if you didn't end up winning, I'd be like, mm. what's going on? But man? yeah, but like majority of the time. I feel like there was a stage I felt like teams feared you lot. And I think you pointed that out when you weren't in the squad, but the team were on a good run. Because mm -hmm. I always say there's always teams in like League One, League Two, they'll always go on like a madness of a 20 game stretch. Yeah. Southampton done it this year, which elevated them. I remember Plymouth's one years ago, mm. and I think it got them promoted. They went like 24 games unbeaten. But teams in League One and League Two always go on a crazy stretch. Yeah. And you lot had your stretch of like, all your vets, it's like all your vets just said, all right, we're going to do this. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. well, I say vets, but, and obviously Keller Dunn was just banging in goals yeah, and madness. stuff, yeah. stuff like that. So yeah, like, I was like, you don't better get promoted. I've, also, because I had money on it as well. So <laughs> <laughs> I won't lie, it won me money. <laughs> <laughs> so well, I was like, yeah, you man better do your two get it. And yeah, you don't did so. No, nah, mm. thankfully, man. You know, yeah, trust that's how it goes, boy. Sometimes I just think things work out weirdly in it, and I think I was meant to be there. You know, mm -hmm. like when I signed there, like that, this was a big thing as well. There was obviously teams in the higher division, etc., but you don't see, I don't see, didn't see the progression there, mm -hmm. and that's been a common thing where I always try and look for. If I'm going somewhere, I want to try and see some form of progression unless mm -hmm. I'm literally stuck. Do you know what I mean? Right. Um, and yeah, like it sort of paid off, although it took a couple of years. No, like it's I'm, second I've, season, but yeah. Second season, mm -hmm. but I've got back to a place where I'm like, all right, I know this is another place where I can say we can potentially kick on again. We can do, mm. we can challenge potentially yep. to do well in the league. It's not just a club where they're hanging on in there. Mm. They're actually yeah. pushing, they're making signings to keep progressing and mm -hmm. ultimately bro, you don't you know you don't know where things can end up you can be written off and people say oh he'll never make it to to this level or to this sort of this sort of club but at the end of the know. day you never know what can happen man mm -hmm. look at you lots running Definitely. in the FA Cup you yeah know? that was impossible it's, it's until it was done this is it <laughs> you know for real yeah, it's so true that's, mm -hmm. that's how I, I look at things man yeah, it's, it's true it's a good perspective do you know do you know when you was younger yeah mm -hmm. Was it only Palace that were coming in for you? Were there other clubs as well? When I was young, so I joined there. How did you even get? How did you get to Palace? So I used to play for my. I grew up in Battersea, and obviously my local club was there. My Sunday league mm -hmm. team, Battersea Youth Centre, and we had a coach that worked. I think they have a lot of that in, in them sort of levels where mm. coach works at a club and they work yeah. for the Sunday league club. Mm. So they basically if they see someone's got the potential, they'll take you on a trial there. And that's kind of where it happened from when I was like, I think I was eight when I first came on a trial at Palace mm. with the old age group. Right. And then they signed me for the next season with the under nines and then just stayed there throughout. But things, that's, that same coach left the next year, went to Fulham and then all the boys from Battersea were going and signing for Fulham. Mm. So oh, things could yeah. kind of go either way. Either way. Like my younger brother ended up going to Fulham. Uh, like and starting off there before he then joined joined up with Palace, so it's just like because he still play football. Yeah, so he's he's still there. Um, so he's been going on loans the last couple of seasons. Been on loan in Scotland mm -hmm. um, the oh, last few years. So it's one of those, isn't it? But that's that's just been the only thing. To be honest, I was one of those players where I think my dad was quite protective and like Good guarding man. over who's. Coming who's coming to, around whether it be mm. agents etc so I wouldn't necessarily hear any chatter of what was going on with mm. clubs okay. and stuff until I think I actually signed with someone when I was 18 mm -hmm. maybe 17 so by then you're already like now training with the first team more and just focusing on breaking in there yeah mm. what did do you know when you was going on loan here was there like any moves abroad I like see how your little brother's in Scotland yeah did you have any kind of moves like that did, yeah, any opportunities so, for moves like that so there's a couple because you know as you start getting on <coughs> and you're not breaking in fully mm. there's those conversations of like if there's a move that works well away 
we'll let you go and then we'll do like sell on fees etc mm. so we know all about them yeah they <laughs> <laughs> I've yes. spoke about that already <laughs> cover their back mm. and to be honest they're honest with you in that sense as well where I was I've been told by managers or by a manager cool we're happy to let you go at this point but mm. we will put in a sell on fee because we don't we want to kind of cover our back because we can see you've got the potential mm. but you're not necessarily going to do it here at this moment in time. Mm. But I also felt then the club weren't realistic with the sell-on the fee, sell on the fee aspects sell-on fee. for yeah, the young so, players. I was like, really? Yeah, because it was deterring, yeah. deterring clubs but mm-hmm. to answer it, there was, I think there was a stage where there was Benfica, no, not Benfica, um, Sporting Lisbon's B team mm. which I thought was on the cards and I would have been so open to it. Mm. Broke down, there was a team in Portugal um, that someone made me aware of another team should I say actually like uh, a team called Nacional I believe yeah. mm-hmm. um, that didn't happen and the last one was a team in Denmark and for me honestly I was keen to go to any of those teams because I'm thinking it's a different it's it's a different way of playing mm. different culture I was mm. open to it but what I, what I kept finding with those ones abroad were like it takes there's so many channels and avenues it needs to get through. Unless you're a big signer for them, mm-hmm. it can take a while. Mm. So it doesn't always get there. And then if you've got something else that's here, it's like, okay, you're going to go play league football. Are you going to wait on the one that's pot- potentially there? You don't mm. know who's really bringing you in, who really likes you there. Does the manager know you? Mm. Probably not. Or go to somewhere where you're on the phone to the manager. They want you to come down, meet them. They want you to play games. Like that's why it was kind of a no-brainer for me when I left and already went to XR. Mm. Fair. Mm-hmm. All right, so you know when you was in secondary, yeah? Did you have to go secondary school, then go Palace to play football, or did you have to move or something? So I did not move. He moved. Yeah, I, did, yeah, I moved. I yeah, didn't so. waste his school system, but he was, you, you were the year, we were the first year that moved. Yeah, so my, oh. um, my year yeah. didn't do that. So we would have to, so let's say we trained two times in the week mm. or like with Antonio it might be like three times <laughs> maybe five yeah, yeah you'd have you'd have to I'd have to just jump on a train from school go go to train after but there was always enough time to get there mm. if there wasn't like I might leave form you know end of the day you go to your form room well we would do that go to our form room whatever our register mm. They would sometimes just let me leave after my last lesson so I have enough time to get there. And oh. obviously, day release as well. You leave halfway through the day. Mm. So your school had like the understanding with yeah. the club. But but in a way, though, that the whole day release thing is a bit mad because we they got to a point where I was playing in the youth team at, mm. in year 11. Mm. And I'm missing like, like in total, a whole day of school really because it would be twice a week I'd be going in at times. Mm. But you're missing mad lessons. Like, <laughs> so if, for example, I have business two days a week and it's on those two days, mm, or sports geez. science, did not have a clue what was going on in the lessons. Mm. But you still got to sit and examine it and didn't it? Mm. So that was quite tough. Like, I don't know how they can improve that or make that better, but... They, they, I guess they did. They moved everyone to the school where yeah, they could do. Way. But when, where the people had to stay in their schools, you, you, you go... <sighs> it's difficult for the people that had to stay in their schools because it's a case of... Do you lose out on football mm-hmm. or do you lose out on education? Mm-hmm. And where do you sit in that, in that like pot? Because if you lose out on football and you see people excelling, you want to go there. But if you lose out on education and you know you're not going to make it, then... You want to back up. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. And the majority so, don't. Obviously that's the thing. make it, innit? it? So yeah. it's like you missed out on school, not for no reason because you had an experience, but mm. where does it sort of leave you in a way, I suppose, innit? it? Well, you lot were training every day, weren't you? Yeah, every morning. Every we, morning. We'd have, so we were working like a full-time schedule. We'd only, we'd only have Wednesday off. Mm. So Wednesday and Sunday were off. How did we, you find that though? Um, the first year it was good because Ben was coaching us. Yeah. They changed coaches a second year and stuff didn't get as serious as it should have been. Mm. And that's when I was kind of kicking on and playing with you guys mm-hmm. from time to time. So uh, I didn't really care to be at those morning sessions as much. Because it wasn't benefiting me being there. Yeah. Um, but I, I was doing, I was going to the sessions, but it's like, okay, cool. I'm not excelling training with this age group and the age group below. Because, you know, you're training with the year group below because those two years that got moved. Yeah. So I'm not excelling training here. So it became, obviously you improved, but the second year I felt like 
let's focus on education because I need something to back up if it doesn't work out. Yeah. Do you get what I mean? And the majority of players in my age group didn't, just don't play football now. Yeah. So you get what I mean? Whereas some people are focusing on the football side of things. Mm. You're like, focus on the education side of things in this year or in the back half of the year, get your GCSEs, do an A-level the next year mm-hmm. and then try and have something to back you up. Yeah. So um, I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it, but I feel, like, I feel like there was tweaks to the system they should have made and with certain coaches, you need coaches you trust in the building. Mm. Ben was one of those. When yeah. they switched up the coaches, I was like, ah, uh, because Ben w- went to be youth team coach. Yeah. You get what I mean? So that was a difficulty for me, really. But I enjoyed the whole process of going through it and there's something different. Mm. No, I hear that. But I guess it was a new <coughs> system as well at the time, so that's probably partly why there was a few chinks in. Mm. Yeah, yeah, of yeah. course. Of course, there had to be. It was never going to be plain sailing. Mm. If mm. it was, it would have been, it would have been great. But, you know, it was never going to be that. Yeah. And it was Crystal Palace. <laughs> <laughs> so we knew that wasn't going to be the case. But when, when it was time for scholars, that's when you moved, didn't it? Or was that so, for yeah, scholars when, as so well? When you got, so when we... So I think scholarships, like... I think I got my scholarship early. So mm. probably by like 14. You said like, a four-year thing. You said a four-year thing at 14. Yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. I think I signed it around them time. Yeah. So, can you like, remember I knew when you I was... signed your first pro? Pardon? Can you remember when you signed your first pro? Yeah, it would have been. I remember we played a game. We played a, you know, you played them preseason games against Dalit Chamber. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Dougie Freeman was the manager, mm. and then we played in the game, and he came on, and then straight after that game, at like, next couple of days, I remember that's that when game. they offered it. So. Mm. I guess I would have been that like 17. 17 is when you can sign in it, but yeah. they offered it like around that time or just before, um, which obviously ni- was nice as well. But really and truly, boy, the hard work or the the journey has not started at that yeah. point. Yeah. You know? But I guess, I don't know, man. Football is just mad, isn't it? There's so many, there's so many sort of uh, routes and like so many things that can happen on your journey. But at Palace... I just feel like, I don't know if everyone's got the same story. <laughs> we got similar. But like, <laughs> everyone's similar. Oh, the players there got PTSD, like mad. Like it's not spoken about enough in it. Mm. But I don't know what it is. Like there's just different things for different people. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's just like the player care side. You had people who cared for the players, but it felt like it was almost in private. And it wasn't really mm. like, oh, okay, when you left or et cetera, et cetera. It was mm. more like, you have certain people you know oh, I can trust this person or mm-hmm. I like this person and like almost relationships were built yeah. but there's a big like like back then there was a big sort of difference whereas now I think they've started changing things with my yeah. brother being there you have people like Danny the kit man who mm. was the kit man doing uh, play liaison I believe and mm-hmm. other people there to help um, the young boys a bit more whereas at times it felt like a battle big you battle. know like that's what I hope is changing there at the club. Mm. I mean, Alex Winter's there now at the club as well. Yeah, so yeah. So I, hope that they've, I hope that they've sort of built that on and sort of kicked it on because like we were discussing before, it was just like more of a brutal yeah. industry at the time. Mm. You know? um, because of like, I won't say your experience, but what you somewhat witnessed, were you more observant of your brother's career there? 100%. Yeah, 100%. I just think just tried to like not like full throttle but I've tried to advise him in the shadows on certain things and when you're getting to this age you need to sort of think about these decisions or mm-hmm. sort of make the decisions yourself as well not just don't, don't just be guided by this person saying this or that person saying that so mm-hmm. I'm going to do it you know you got to make your own decisions because at the end of the day it's your career mm-hmm. and you're going to have to sort of rest on those decisions you make or be able to sleep with the decisions you make. Yeah. You know, but uh, thankfully he's, he's, he's done well to this point. Um, yeah, it's just about him being hungry and getting as much game time as possible. Mm-hmm. That's going to ultimately give him the best chance to either get a career there or get a, get a career away from there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He's done his thing though. He's mm-hmm. done his thing early in his career as a young pro. He's, yeah. he's, you can see he's screwed on. Yeah. Because my advice to my brother was you're not going to Crystal Palace. 
Um, that, <laughs> L-O-L. That, was, that was a simple advice because I, I had done my time there. You didn't need to do any time there. Yeah. <laughs> when he says time, he means jail time. <laughs> <laughs> the way he's describing it. No, 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 but that, I'll be honest. Because when H said about the player care side of things, I was there for 13 years. The day I left, I didn't get a buy, no nothing like that. No, yeah. nothing. I didn't expect it either. But yeah. it was the fact that after, it was the whispers of oh, people coming out the wood. Oh, they was, they were seeing my dad when my Jeremiah was playing. Oh, tell oh tell Jacob, um, hope he's all right in this sort of stuff. You get what I mean? Yeah. So it's a case of you could have told me to my face, but because there was so much going on in the background, you didn't behind the scenes. Face, you get what I mean? So yeah. it felt like people were caring for you in the behind the scenes, but you needed them caring for you in the forefront. Yeah, it's mad though because like obviously that that club gave us so much mm-hmm. in a way, but then it's like I just think. You would you would expect there to be a level of I don't know respect. Mm. They they could have definitely done more as a, mm. as a young like man or adult. But this is the thing I think with people generally is everyone protects their their own interest in it. Mm-hmm. Mm. And ultimately, if someone comes out, let's say someone stands up and says, "Oh, they're fighting for you in a in a board meeting or in a room where someone's making a decision on you," mm-hmm. are you going to risk your own reputation or your own back? But you'd think if you've grown a relationship, understand the player, seen them play those at times, and you can see there's potential there for them to kick on. Because you're not going to be the finished article at 19, yeah. 21. But sometimes I think you have to have someone who's got a bit of belief mm-hmm. about the boy to say, because in that time period, how many people really came through, broke onto the scene? Oh, no one from between Johnny and Aaron. I don't think there was anybody that actually that like, cemented a, a sort of place in the team. No. And that's, I think, a five-year gap between them. You get what I'm Might be big. Aaron's younger than me. So, Aaron's, what, 26? Yeah, you ain't got... Johnny's my year. So that's five 22. years. Yeah. So, yeah. The, so the question is, wow. where did it go wrong in terms of you haven't met, you weren't able to produce one player in that time frame? What was being looked at? What were the, the motives attached mm. to the situation? Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's kind of how I look at it, but it is what is in it. Like you're meant to be where you're meant to be, I think, at times. Mm-hmm. And you're given what you can handle. Mm-hmm. Do you get what I'm saying? Some of us, maybe if we went and ended up a Premier League player, we might have been on the floor in our personal life or mm-hmm. in our mental well being or whatever it may be. So I think you're given what you can handle in life and you know what's meant for you will come at the right time, isn't it? Mm. You're not wrong at all. You're not wrong at all. That's an interesting perspective, though. It's a very good perspective. I think it's the mm. right perspective, though. Mm. Yeah, that's my honest perspective. Well. That's not my media trained. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> honestly, I've, bro. But I think that's the right perspective, especially from that place. Mm-hmm. You see, players make it to the top, and then they're what they end up bankrupt because mm-hmm. they couldn't handle the money they were given. Mm-hmm. They end up on drugs. They end up here, there. I'm not like doing it to say this person's a bad person or that person's a bad person mm. but generally speaking not everyone can handle the, the money, fame the money, money success mm. and even ev- those around you like they can somewhat lead you astray or mm. not encourage you to be better because yeah. I always feel like you or lot start, in- start treating you a lot different yeah mm-hmm. I always feel like mm-hmm. you lot need people that can tell you no yeah do mm-hmm. you know what I mean Facts. but you also need the encouragement as yeah. well like, as the balance is, is very key that's a mm. great point because my friends outside of my friends like outside of football because obviously we've got friends in football and friendships we built through football like me and H we mm-hmm. built the friendship through football mm-hmm. and I've known him since we were 10 years old so yeah. it's been more than friendship through football but I always said outside of football I needed friends that didn't care about football yeah. didn't care about anything that went on in, in my football career they yeah. just wanted to see me doing well as a person. Mm-hmm. And those are the friends I cherish the most because I could be playing a game and they wouldn't even ask me how the game's gone. They'd just say, oh, how, how's the, how you doing? How's the family doing? Because yeah. that's all they care about. You get yeah, what I mean? interested in the game. Mm. And that's what I enjoyed about having those type of friends outside of the game. They just care for you. And you always need that person that just cares for you. Yeah. I guess it was, it took you out of the football bubble and somewhat normality because mm. there's a lot of things that you lot are somewhat shelter from like mm-hmm. we discuss it with you in terms of I think Dej might have asked you if you felt you missed out on uni for instance mm-hmm. things like that do you yeah. know what I mean yep. so like you talking about those friends it's just like alright cool this is a normal aspect of my life again mm-hmm. in that sense where not everything's just all football 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 mm-hmm. as the way he says saka 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so 
Um, Wait, what, what team do you support? Your team. Oh, cool, cool, cool. I didn't even want to answer, boy. <laughs> yeah. that's Use a man. the term support loosely. <laughs> that, that, that's a man that's not happy with our current. Yeah. Yeah. United, man, boy. Boy, I know we've just had success as well, but it's just feeling like we're in the mud, bro. I feel like, you yeah, know when Liverpool had their tough, I feel like we're there. Here we are. We're there, innit? This is open heart surgery, man. It's I keep, I keep yeah. going back to it, but it is. Difference really. is we just managed to win stuff, though. Mm. Yeah, I'll like, take two trophies in the last Cover years, under the really? cracks a little yeah, bit. Yeah, because some teams ain't even done that, but... Why are you looking at... <laughs> 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 oh, boy, FA Cup. FA Cup, I'll tell you the first season. FA Cup, I'll tell you the first four years ago. Four and a half, yeah. Four and a half, four. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not, it's not bad, though. Are we going to ask Leah who... Did you have an open-top parade? That no, we did not. Oh, it was sorry. during COVID. You look, you look <laughs> was celebrating the life out of that. Aye, if it weren't COVID, they would have had it. They would have had it. Bro, Ooh, no, they would have had, had it. It so. was during COVID. What? Bamiang was so happy he was even doing tattoos. <laughs> he thought he was the guy. Oh, my God. Oh, um, man. Just on to... It would talk when I was thinking you've had 50 million promotions, etc. How did it feel going through a lot of play playoff experience at a young age and then playing in big games, Wembley, mm -hmm. etc.? Because for me, it felt like you're in a playoff matchup or final at Wembley every other year <laughs> at a certain point. Do you know what? So I had two playoff finals. So the first one was Plymouth. Mm -hmm. Like on my first proper loan, um, the next one was XR, mm -hmm. and both far from London. Yeah, they're close to each other, though. Yeah, yeah they are. Yeah. rivals as well. So I don't know how I got away with them. <laughs> but um, yeah, the the Plymouth one was mad because do you know what? Yeah, I, I thought I don't know what it was. I think there was a there was a challenge in the first like fifteen minutes or mm -hmm. twenty minutes. And I got like elbowed in the face. Try. And bro, I was seeing stars. Like, mm. like I, I said to myself, let me get through the first half. If I get in half time and I'm all right, then I'll stay on. If mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm coming off. So I don't really remember the first half. <laughs> not going to lie. Played the second half and they were just on us. It was against uh, Wimbledon. Okay. So you know, ah, yes. that's the iconic, I can feel yeah. 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 Managers hit me up on the WhatsApp. Strength 99. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, they were just on it that like they just done us and I think we might have been favourites as well but I believe you were the favourites thing don't always work in your favour no. like Wembley <laughs> oh it's a one off game innit? and that pitch is big mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I just remember coming off the pitch thinking oh, I just wish I took the ball more mm -hmm. this and that so then when we got to Wembley with X I was like no I'm going to just get on it as much as possible and I felt a bit more relaxed mm -hmm. so I feel like you know you see top players play Let's say we've seen the um, Champions League final recently and these are used to it. Because they've yeah. done it time and time again. You start getting a bit more comfortable in the situation and the environment. So it didn't feel like as big an occasion in terms of like, it was a big game, mm -hmm. but it felt like, okay, I'm a bit more relaxed for this. Mm -hmm. Then we still got pumped. <laughs> Cold madness. Yeah, good three, side. Three, Shit, one, man. I think. Done us in it. And obviously we've seen what that Cov team's gone on. To, yeah, yeah, that Cov team was to fake. Go, to go and do with the same manager. And I everything. felt the ref of it this year. This is it, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, sometimes real quality. Historic, <laughs> historically with them. Yeah, just shines through. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> I feel like none of the fandom I know have had good experiences against bro, Coventry. Bro, you don't want to fuck Cov on the right day because it's long, man. Mm. They've got the... Yeah, they've got the... Um, they got the Chelsea moles implanted, mm -hmm. in there, so there's that gene. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you know what's happening. Yeah, the moles five nil in the higher ups. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but yeah, to be fair though, like I think there's sick games to play in, isn't it? But when you don't come up on top, on top, it's it's not nice. Mm -hmm. mm. And then like what we've had had the semi final with MK. That was probably one that I would say like I was proper proud of the performance that I put in myself personally and the second leg because I was didn't start the first leg mm -hmm. got in for the second leg and played well but we were just short I think we were two, it was two on an aggregate who mm. did you not play again? Wickham Wickham oh shit yeah yeah, yeah. So, you, like, you had a good game second game this is it yes um, yes but yes. it was jarring because like we won the game on the day but it didn't do, anything do it in it yeah. but the team was like 
I think probably up until now, that might be the best that team I played in. Football and wise. Mm. Bro, that team was serious. That MK team was good. And you've seen where <laughs> players have gone to from there and like people have gone to flipping Forever. real good clubs in it from, from there, from that team. So mm-hmm. yeah, like it was just, it was a shame that we didn't manage to kind of get, Over the... get it done and mm. go to the, go to the final or whatever, but it's football, isn't it? Yeah. I got, I got one more question for you though. Mm-hmm. You know, being young in the Premier, obviously you signed your pro. What's like one of the dumbest things you've done, yeah, with your money? Dumbest things? Do you know what? And you're just thinking like, why, why did I even do that? I'm quite, a, I'm quite good with my like savings and stuff in it. Like I'm mm-hmm. not, I'm not too bad, but like, I think the first, the first paycheck that me, one of my boys. Reese, mm, I remember that. Bro, we went down Selfridges day one. <laughs> I remember. Went in there. Moncler, oh wait, Moncler, uh, <laughs> zip up, Gucci belt. You know them times you used to tuck the t-shirt into the belt. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, bro, embarrassing, man. Embarrassing. When I look back on it. Like, what am I doing? Like, this first day, bro, <laughs> blowing bare bread on designer clothes, which is something that I would not be uh, an advocate for now. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's probably the one thing I would say. But generally speaking, man, I was, I was good, man. You was right. Yeah, I was okay, right. Okay, cool. So. You gotta do it once in your life. Yeah, yeah definitely. I yes, mean, horrible need... purchases, by the way. Aged terribly. Yeah, yeah. you need stories, bro. You yeah, need stories. Sure. I remember. Me. I remember we came in the next day and someone said, hey, "Reese paid what for them trainers?" We didn't know what Balenciagas were until he brought them in. He's done it from early. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I got one. I got probably two. Who? What is your best eleven of players you've played with? Yeah, that was mine to be fair. So. Glad you asked that. Best eleven. Yeah, you can include yourself. You're in the midfield, so Damn. you're you're on you're in the team. Nah, I'll try not to include myself. Let me think. Goalkeeper. Goalkeeper. Mm. He's the best. Oh. I was gonna say it's Ferroni. Mm. He's a Palace legend. Mm. But I'm thinking if I played with him, he might have been gone them times. But he was there still. I think he was there, but I don't know if he was. Do you know playing. who was called though? Yeah. Have a guess. Russ. Steve Mandanda. Oh my goodness. He <laughs> oh, was yeah. a serious Shit. man. Oh, was at my Palace. God. He was a serious, Bro, serious it man. It was like Onana, but like the better version. Five years ago. <laughs> ten years ago, maybe. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe I would say him because yeah. he used to play in the twenty ones games. This guy was mad with his feet. Mm. He wouldn't pick the ball up. He just got the ball at his feet all the time. Yeah. I say him center uh, him in goal. Centre backs. Centre backs. Yeah, centre backs first, not even right back. We'll you get know, there, you bro. Know Dedge is unorthodox. <laughs> <laughs> bro, you I, just I have follow to, the script. You, you just go go with centre backs first. Centre backs. Centre backs. All right, cool. Who we got? 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 Nah, I'm gonna go. Who plays centre back? For all your teams. Oh, you got all the teams. You right, know. Cool, cool, cool. I'm going to go now. Yeah, go on. Harry Darling. Mm. Mm-hmm. This guy was with me at MK, but this guy's just a joke, bro. He's dribbling through the whole of the pitch. Mm. Banging shots off from like 40 yards. Cold. Quick. Everything. Got it all. I think he'll end up in the Prem as well. Where's he now? He's at Swansea. Okay. okay. But I think That's... he's Prem destined. Mm. Uh, Were you with I him at... Would... Uh... MK. Cambridge and MK. I thought MK, yeah. Other, other centre half. See, I'm trying to pick properly. Just to remind you, you played for Palace, Crawley, Plymouth, Bristol Rovers, Northampton, Exeter, MK, Cambridge, and Mansfield. Other centre half. Jake Clark Sauter. Mm. Bristol mm. Rovers. Bristol Rovers on there. This guy was. He's at QPR now, isn't yeah. he? Yeah. Mm. I used to call him Young Rio. Mm. Real serious player. Mm. Like, very good player. Um, I actually watched well. them a couple months ago. So what, yeah. what, what about a right back? Yeah. Right back. This should be easy. Who's a right back? I know. I, I know what you're gonna say. You think it should be easy? He just didn't play right back when we played with him. Yeah. So that means number oh. nine. That means fair <laughs> number nine when we played with him. He plays for your club, your Manchester United. <laughs> Oh shit, <laughs> bro! I can't even think of him as a right back. Bro. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah, so that, that's you why. can't have him as right back then. All right, cool. Yeah, that would be against. No, right back, right back, right back. AWB. He has to be a blade. No, because he didn't. He didn't play with him. No, no, right no. Back. Right back, still right back, yeah. right back. I gotta give him that. Yeah. He's a right back now, yeah. isn't it? 
Like, did you ever back. play with my right back at 21s? Probably not. Did you, you ever look at him play the black? Fam, score right back. No, oh. no, he could always slide tackle, bro. It's a from fair, striker. To be fair, Sole yeah. always said that from he young. Could always slide tackle, innit? it? Mm. So that was that was why probably they moved in there, innit? Mm. Um so I put him in I put him in there, man. Cool, left back. Left back. Um left back. Left back, left back, left back. Dean Luton. Mm. Still playing, bro. Legend. This guy's played over nine hundred games, I believe. Bro, this guy's a legend, man. Honestly, <laughs> nah, he is. He actually Honestly. is. There's probably better other guys in it, but that's your one. That's, yeah. I don't know. I don't even know how he stayed in that league his whole career. Bro, pretty much. I don't know how he's still playing. Yeah, he's <laughs> he's just he's built on diet coke. That's I hear it, bro. That's all he drinks, and he just I don't know, man. He got energy for days, isn't it? But, um, he's probably got the record for most football league games played. Probably. It's either there or thereabouts. Yeah. Mm. Well, are we going four three three or four four two? Four three three. It's got to be three three, isn't it? Yeah. No. Alright, cool. Three, three. Who's 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 on the left of you? Who's on the right of you? Are you putting so, yourself in? Nah. Okay. Right. Go, go. Do your right. midfield three. Do your midfield three, then. My three. I would go. Jason Punchin mm-hmm. is in there. I would put. Johan Kabay in there. Oh, that, that was number so one. Fine. Easy. <laughs> and then I would put... I used to love Kabay's song, bro. Ten Dog. Ten Dog. Bro, you know who I want to put? Who you want to put in there? I want to put Ishmael. Oh <laughs> my goodness. <laughs> what a player. I can't put it. I can't yeah, put it. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, you wouldn't... Yeah, number 10, yeah. I'm going to put... I need to know off camera, man. No, number 10, I'm going to put uh, Scott Twine. Ooh. Serious. Bad boy. Are you Seriously. over my MK? Serious? Yeah, yeah, Scott Twine's a bad boy still. Bro, bro. Did you ever play with Jack Payne? Nah. Uh, never Tw- played Twine him. was done a bit last season with injuries, but he's a player. I bet I'm butchering this, by the way. It's all right. That's fine. You can come back and do another one. I mean, it's your squad. It. Yeah. Get me. Four through three. That could just, they could just off get me. Off the wings. Off the wings. Off the wings. Your wing is. This got to be easy. It's got to be oh, easiest, oh, bit. Obviously, Wolf on one wing. Mm hmm. Put him on the. I put him on the left. Probably the star man in the team, innit? Mm. Put him on the left. On the right. Did I play with Yala like that? We must have. And once Boy, qualifies. I, do you know what I, I actually did? Still didn't play a game with him. He's on the on the other wing. I had mm-hmm. to put him in there. Them two there are there. And you're centre forward. The wingers. Oh centre forward. This is tough still. Mm. <laughs> mm. This is actually a tough one. Who's been the serial bags, man? <laughs> His name was mentioned earlier. Yeah, you know, that's a serious guy. Yeah, that's a serious but, guy. I mean, I call him but, Football League Harry Kane, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but is that is that more serious than putting like Dwight Gale? Nah, he's, Dwight Gale's probably the best, you know. I've, I, I hear in terms of name statures, not in, in the terms prem, of though. your players. Nah, but this guy was a... When he went down. But my no, players about, even the Prem though, isn't it? Even the Prem was a very good player. Is it? Left foot, right foot the same. Yeah, serious. Gale is scary a striker. striker. <laughs> but my my players though, man. I gotta put Paul Wiley, man. That's my Yeah, player. I agree, <laughs> man. Yeah, yeah, That's what because in behind Oh, he's just he's a nightmare to play against, bro. Mm. Bro, I just yeah. used to, I, I used to because he dropped a conference, but I just called him Lower league Harry Kane, bruv. He can do everything. No, do you know who he is? He's lower league Vardy, bro. Yeah. He but I don't him behind. He... Bro, he don't even look fast, but he just, I don't Eats know, the man. grass up. When I play the but the reason the why, I'd say the Kane aspect is the left foot, right foot. He mm. can come deep like Kane. Yeah. Like no he, back lift. He could do everything, mm. bruv. Yeah, yeah. Like, if he gets it on the half turn, he's hitting it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, no, you won't serious. think, oh, bro, why are you shooting from that angle? until you see it fly top corner? <laughs> yeah, no, I hear you still. I hear that. I think. Do you know what I'm gonna do though? Go on. Who's my midfield? You said <laughs> goodbye, goodbye, punch, and twine. I'm taking out. <laughs> yeah, see you later, Scott. I'm t- no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> He's taking out punch. <laughs> no, I'm taking out goodbye. Jay! What? What's in that? Did you had too much rivers. Ugh, brother. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best player in the team. I'm though. taking out goodbye. <laughs> Trust. <laughs> I'm taking out Kabai. I would have I'm even put him first before naming and centre back. I'm taking him out. Where's Hulahan? Oh, okay. That okay. man there, that three, I don't even know how it's forming because none of them are sitting. Yeah, but, yeah, that's bad. <laughs> still, but I hear it. Kabai didn't play with him like that. Like, 
Yeah, no. Nah. You get me? Mm. Where's Hulahan? You're in there. Bro. All right, what a playoff. Seriously. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hulahan, what a magician, bruv. That's my team, man. <laughs> I, I like that too, though. I like it. So, quickly, Mandanda, Aaron, Harry Darling. Uh, who's the other centre back? Jake Clark Sauter. Jake Clark Sauter, uh, Lewington, Hulahan, Punch. And Twine, yeah. midfield, wingers, Yala and Wolf, and up top, Paul Mullen. Mm-hmm. Bro, that's a do you know team. what it is? That team's been through the league. <laughs> that's a team. If there was one bit of advice that you'd have to give to your younger self, what would it be? That's a good question. Good question. I would probably, I'd probably just say to myself, no excuses. Make sure you're just grinding, regardless of the situation. Keep the same work ethic, regardless of what's going on, and and you'll be alright. That's what I'd probably say to myself, to be honest. Mm. Mm. It's good. I feel like you've always been quite level-headed throughout your career, anyway. Yeah, I think I've always been. I think I'm. I've been level-headed, or let's say, quite calm, and I feel like I've generally been like a. a yeah, a calm person, mm-hmm. right? But it's what's happening when you're, or how you feel when you're alone in it, or when you're just going through a situation. I think I used to let things get to me a bit more, or affect me a bit more, mm-hmm. and I kind of, kind of like mentally uh, check out of situations in it. Mm. Whereas like now, I've got, I think I've got a bit more resilience. So that's why I would say that those words to myself, my yeah. younger self. That comes with age, though. Mm-hmm. Comes with age and experience. Yeah, for sure. Get me. Most play, definitely. You played a lot of games. You've been, mm-hmm. you've been through the battles and all that jazz. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Cool. Song of the week. You know, you watch the podcast and so you know what song of the week the segment is. But I'm ready, man. <laughs> <laughs> God, you could go you, first. You can kick us off. No, no, no. I'll go last. I'll go last. Oh, okay, okay. No, you go not last. Second. Second. I'll go second. Yeah. Second. Joe's probably lost the word. Yeah, because you, you, you sure? Because your song got taken last week. You sure you don't want to go first? I'm going first. Oh, I'm going first. <laughs> go on, go on. I'm going first. Odumodu Black Hotel Lobby. Mm-hmm. That's my song. That's what we were running. Mm. And the speakers and the, and the suits. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Let me go third. Though, cause, wait, yeah. Ah, cool. I'll go, go, last, go, last, go, I'll go second then. Um, oh, I've got two, but I'll just do one. It's um, NSG Petite. Mm. Yeah, I was banging that yesterday nice, on, nice, on, my, nice. on my rides. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, my song of the week this week is from Drake, and it is one of the best interests of an album ever, and it's Tuscan Leather. Ooh. Yeah, that was running in the gym today, and I was saying every single lyric out loud. Classical music. Yeah. I mean, that's, you sing to every R&B song. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's, Drake, that's not R&B, that one there, that's the one of the best interests. Yeah, but you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. All right, what, my tune? Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, Nursery Rhymes, Craft God. You know that? Mm-hmm. Little remix on Gogo. You know oh, Gogo? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get that in your playlist. <laughs> boy, For when I was in Jamaica. That makes sense. Yeah. That was running. <laughs> For a minute, when you said Nursery Rhymes, I was just thinking, this is the dad in you. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, where are you going with this? But okay. Your viewers will know, man. Mm. Your viewers will know. Do you know what? I think I got my NSG song wrong, you know? Mm-hmm. What a guy. <laughs> it's actually called Lupita. You called it Petit? Petit. I called it Petit. <laughs> big tune, though. The Peter's a big Le track. Peter. Yeah. And we all said, mm, like we were, like he was correct. It's all you look, it's all you look for, man. It's got to be changed the order, isn't it? So I just said, ah, oh, yeah, all right, cool. But well, Lupita, NSG, Lupita. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, 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 that's a big track. So That's why he was probably thinking petite, bruv. <laughs> oh, what are you saying? Though? You know what I'm Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to check that one yeah, out. Yeah. So, well, add your song to it as well. Yeah. Listen, when that one comes on, you're going to be... In the car, <laughs> be be NHD do have a song called Petite. That's why I went along with it as well. Oh, so. so yeah, yeah, actually okay. do. Yeah. <laughs> nah, mine was, was Lupita, though. Okay, oh. fair enough. Oh. Cool. I guess we can wrap it up. Yeah. Get me. Um, obviously, Big H. Here I'm working. Uh, <laughs> anytime I see you, Big H. But um, yeah, obviously, thank you very much for joining us, having this fantastic conversation. I uh, thoroughly enjoyed this. I probably can speak for Dej and Jacob in that sense as well. Hundred um, percent. We definitely want to 
get you on again at some point. Maybe who knows when you get another promotion because mm -hmm. so you do, do, you know what I mean? Playoffs or promotions. Um, and yeah, just like we said, hopefully you have a fantastic rest of off season. You actually get to relax and then get back into the footballing mindset again mm -hmm. um, and then look forward to a new season. Um, yeah. One last thing, who would you recommend to come on next onto the show? Ooh. Or onto the podcast, I should say. Ooh. Very true. You can have two. You can have two people. Two people? Yeah. That's a good one. But there's a slight to that question. You've got to help us get them. <laughs> get them. <laughs> yeah. Who would be good? Unless one person's unrealistic and it would just be who you'd want as a, mm. say, anyone. It could be anyone. So one right. realistic and one, one of anyone in the world, for instance. London town. Because we got to, we got to shoot our shot <laughs> with whoever, bruv. Yeah, it's true. I would say oh, you need to get a race on here, man. Race on the side. Yeah, no, that's true. You need to got you need to get him on on there because he's got a story to tell. You got a story to tell, man. Mm -hmm. Um, and the other person, this is another one of my boys, but he's doing really well in what he's currently doing, Jevon Palmer. Mm. That's another one because boy, this man is he's doing it, doing it, doing it, and when he's he's been like focusing on driving towards certain goals and yeah, he keeps hitting them. So probably for game and knowledge on certain things, a little bit away from football as well. Yeah, mm. that's another person I would say. Big cool. up Javen Spectrum my guys, fit, my boys. Yep. Yes. I like that. I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah, cool, yeah. we'll make that happen. So, boys, right. I look forward to them coming on the show. Mm. Get me. Come hey, on the show. Hey, just put your name forward, so <laughs> you're coming on. Yes. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, I was wrapping up. Um, yeah, good luck into the pre season, however difficult it is. Like I said, you're, you're becoming, <laughs> especially with promotion, you lot will probably get pushed even harder. Yeah. Um, shout out you I see you modelling the new kit as well the new kit's actually really nice yeah, um, so you got ventures yeah mm, you open doors man <laughs> hopefully you can get me one do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> um, or even this season I've got you, I've got you. I like that um, and then yeah you're sitting on camera you know no I've got <laughs> as Dej likes to say clip <laughs> so, I'm good on my promises that's good um, kit, and yeah just best of luck with the family and then the marriage to come Thank within you, the next year as well. So hopefully it'll be a double celebration because like you said, Mansfield look like they want to push again mm -hmm. and they look like a club with the resources from the outside looking in. So mm -hmm. go for it. Shoot for the stars. You get me? God, brilliant, bro. And, but yeah, as Dej likes to say, tell a friend to tell a friend. Jacob, like and subscribe. And here I am. You can sign us out if you want. Hey, this is the best uh, podcast right now. Make hey. sure you're tuning in. These men are doing a mad thing. So. <laughs> <laughs> love that, love that. Thank yeah. you very much, Big H. Thank you for joining us. Oh, and yeah, peace, people.